of what your field represents. You have a firmer grasp on reality. But what often happens to people somewhat, some, at some point in their career is that the more they know about their field, the more complicated it becomes. All of a sudden, new unforeseen problems uh, arise. Uh, they have to keep up with all kinds of new trends and changes in their field. There's more and more and more information to absorb the further you rise up. And often you have the feeling of being completely overwhelmed by this glut of information and the complexity of your field to the point where you don't really even feel like you're getting this better perspective. Well, masters are people who, because of their intense connection to what they're studying, because of their love for it, they actually learn faster. They learn more intensely than other people. And they generate this kind of momentum where they push past all of those obstacles and they reach the top of this mountain. It could take 10, it could take 20 years. But at the top of that mountain, they have perfect perspective. They can see in all directions. They have a, a real solid grasp on their field. They can, <clears throat> they can make connections between an idea over here and an idea over there that you can't see when you're part way down the mountain because you don't have that kind of perspective. <clears throat> this command of their field is immensely satisfying and is even godlike. And I am saying that this is the highest form of intelligence we humans can achieve. Whether it's Napoleon Bonaparte, Leonardo da Vinci, Steve Jobs, it doesn't matter. Now, as I was thinking about this, it's, it kind of struck me as odd because this is such an important idea to have this kind of, if this is the highest level that the human brain can reach, um, why aren't there really any books written about this? There are books, but the books tend to be of one of two types. They're either heavy academic books on neuroscience and how the brain works and how we learn, filled with statistics, and they could be interesting, but it would take you years to figure out how you could possibly apply that to your, to your own life. On the other hand, you have these kind of cheap, superficial self-help books like Think Like Leonardo da Vinci or all this other crap, and you're kind of seduced and you buy the book and there's like half of an idea in there and then you throw it away and it's on your bookshelf. It doesn't, there's not enough meat there. You know, then there can be a book maybe like Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers, which is an excellent book, and he talks about the whole 10,000 hour idea, but it's also very hard to figure out how to apply it. He's got all these things about if you're gonna be a great hockey player, your parents have to have been born in this decade in parts of Canada and all this other stuff, it, you know. So, and then the other thing about this subject is that our culture has all of these myths and mis misconceptions about this form of power. We, we think of it's a function of genetics or high IQ, or a larger brain, or going to a great university like Oxford. So I decided I was gonna write the book. I was gonna write a book that was gonna connect everything, connect all of the research. And I was gonna debunk all of these, what I think are silly ideas that people have about genius and, and talent. And the method I was going to use to write this book was the following. I was going to read all of the books that are very academic about the science of learning and creativity and about how the brain works and the evolution of the brain. Then I was going to read the biographies of the greatest masters in history, and there were quite a few of them. And then I was also going to interview nine contemporary masters from all different fields, take all of that large amount of research and somehow figure out how to make a book. Now, as I started to write this book, I became more and more excited because everything was sort of falling into place. And I made what I consider three dis important discoveries, radical discoveries, about the nature of mastery, discovery of where it comes from, the source of it, how you get there, the process that leads to it, and the nature of creative energy and ma or high-level intuition, which is sort of the end game of mastery itself. So, Tonight, as I'm treating you or pretending that you're my apprentices, I'm going to apprentice you in these three key ideas that I, I discovered. And I'm going to do that through telling you the stories, through taking you inside the brain of three of the, I consider the greatest masters that I profile in this book. So I hope you're ready. Um, so all of my books have kind of iconic figures like 